Ride Originals Vinyl in San Francisco on Hayes and Steiner. All right, let's go in. Hey guys, JT back again and back in the record room. Back from our trip from San Francisco, I had a wonderful time and I did make it uh, to a record store. I was gonna go to Amoeba, but you know, I really thought I, I wanted to go to a smaller store and that would be Originals Vinyl on Fillmore Street and on the corner of Hayes and Fillmore. Uh, not a big store, but great selection, very, very clean records um, as he does clean them right there for you. Um, and as I, uh, you know, thumb through records, he just says, hey, let me, let me spin that for you. I mean, it was just fantastic. I didn't even have to ask. He says, hey, let me put that on. And in store, uh, he had just had some bookshelf uh, Yamaha speakers with kind of a DJ setup, and it just sounded amazing. I bought, I bought eight records and uh, really happy about that. I spent more money than I'm used to doing, but you know, I was right there in the Fillmore district in San Francisco. I mean, you know, the Fillmore West was right, right down from the record store and it really had the flavor of, uh, of the city. So I really had a lot of fun and you know, I'll get into it, but I gotta tell you, you know, going up to the store, uh, driving up Fillmore Street, all I could think about was uh, the uh, 1968 film uh, Bullet with Steve McQueen, the great Peter Yates film. And uh, I was thinking, man, this must have been where uh, Steve McQueen was driving that, uh, or a stuntman rather. I think Steve McQueen did a bunch of his own stunts. Uh, that 68 um, Mustang GT up and down Fillmore Street, but actually uh, a lot of the car chases were over on Taylor uh, in and around Pacific Heights in the neighborhood. But going up, uh, uh, going up Fillmore Street in my uh, in my Toyota Rav was really a trip. Very very steep, and then coming down, I took my wife and son back up there just so they could see the beautiful view into the bay from the top of Fillmore Street, going all the way back down to Lombard. So let me get in, into the records. Um, yeah, first of all. I've been wanting this record for a really long time, and that's Buffalo Springfield again. And I was going to get a repress of this, and here it was. And, you know, it was a very fair price. Let me show you. Uh, this is just, the, the jacket is a near, uh, near mint minus. Uh, this is the one I was missing. This is the good one, the great one. And, uh, you know, James Burton played on this one as well. He played Dobro on a child's uh, claim to fame. And you know, you have Steve Stills, Neil Young, Richie Fure, Bruce Palmer, and Dewey Martin on drums. And you know, Hal Blaine and Carol Kay from The Wrecking Crew probably did play on this record, Unaccredited. Just so fantastic to have this. Here's the back jacket. And again, these guys, these records are just so clean. And here it's on the old uh, Atco label. Really, really glad to have this one. And you know, this is, uh, I mean, who doesn't know this record? But if you didn't, it's folk rock. It's a, a bit of psych. Wonderful. Uh, Buffalo Springfield's about one of my all-time favorite bands. And uh, next up, this record was going, JT, take me home, take me home. And that would be Moby Grape. I've never had this on vinyl. It's expensive. Let me show you. Well, I took the tag off. This was 40 bucks, and it's well worth it. This is a near mint minus, guys. I mean, just phenomenally fantastic. And here's the back cover. Ooh, psychedelic. And, uh, you know, this, uh, the Moby Grape, they formed in 1966. They are a San Francisco band. And uh, this album uh, debuted in 1967. And what's so cool about Moby Grape is all five members uh, wrote the songs, sang, uh, equally helped out with, um, hence the reason why they formed such a great uh, debut album in this one. And you know, you have Skip Spence in the band, Don Stevenson, and he is flipping the bird. This is the OG uh, uh, cover. And uh, that's Don Stevenson there flipping the bird. Bob Mosley, Jerry Miller, and uh, Peter Lewis. 
And let me show you the vinyl on this. This is just incredible. It has the wrong sleeve, but who cares? It's on a 2i Columbia, and it is squeaky clean. That ultrasonic uh, record cleaning machine that he has just cleans those records beautifully. So really, really happy to have this one. And next up, uh, I saw this one, and this one as well was just staring at me. You have, um, you've got uh, Nils Lofgren on the cover doing a backflip. And that would be uh, his, uh, his band Grin with his brother. And so really happy to have this one. Here's the inner jacket. This is the last album that they did, uh, Nils and his brother. And what's great about this band, everybody sings in, in this band as well. Harmonies. All, all of the members sing. Really great. Yeah, I definitely want to get the first and second Grin album. So this is my first by them. And next up would be... Um, now, this is a band, very, very psychedelic, uh, formed in Chicago and uh, came to... Uh, San Francisco and Los Angeles, but mostly San Francisco, and that would be H.P. Lovecraft, and this is just Lovecraft, Valley of the Moon, and you know, I really love the first two records, but when I saw this, I knew I had to have this one. Very fair price. This was $15. It's so clean, really, really clean, and I, I love this record. This is, this is right up my alley, this music. And it really, it really has a lot of blues rock feel with great singing. And it's just on the, uh, the old Reprise label. And this is from 1970. It was recorded at Wally Hyder. All the rest of the, uh, the members of HP uh, Lovecraft um, went uh, their separate ways. And um, George and Michael stayed. And good thing they did. This is just a wonderful record. And I'm sure a lot of you know... Uh, that particular uh, record. So, uh, yeah, once again, Lovecraft, uh, Valley of the Moon. And next up, here's a band that I've really been into as of late, uh, a band that I always loved, and again, no wonder why they were uh, invited to uh, perform at Woodstock, and that would be Canned Heat. And this record this is a beautifully sounding record. This is Living the Blues, Going Up the Country, Boogie Music, Walking by Myself, Refried Boogie, uh, Sandy's Blues, Pony Blues, My Mistake, One Kind Favor. Man, this is, this is just so, so incredibly wonderful and a brilliant record. Uh, absolutely. Uh, this is a German press. And even the owner says, man, this record just sounds wonderful. So here it is on a German pressing. And uh, he had a number of uh, German and French press records in the store. And he just uh, remarked at what a wonderful sounding record this is. Really glad to have that one. Next up, guys, this is a record I've been um, wanting to get for a really, really long time. Uh, I've been uh, buying uh, Bird's records. And this is one that I held out on. I was going to get it through Acoustic Sounds, but bam, right there at the store. It was turn, turn, turn. And for 20 bucks, uh, Matthew put this on. He says, hey, let me give that a spin. I mean, it just sounded amazing. Just simply amazing. You know, uh, first track, turn, turn, turn. Uh, just fantastic. And this is, this is that National Birds Fan Club uh, release. Let me show you. And I, I mean, the record just sounds amazing. I'm just so happy with it. It's just on the Columbia. And I really don't need anything else. It's cleaned perfectly. And, um, you know, the thing about this record, you know, this is the first record where David is uh, accredited for his songwriting. And, you know, Gene just had so many great records. What I really like about this photo is Roger is right behind Gene. And that when Gene left the band, this is what Gene was missing, is Roger's great arrangements for his 
wonderful, uh, majestic songs uh, that he was writing. So, uh, yeah, too bad, you know, Gene couldn't stick around a bit longer. Of course, he did write Eight Miles High. And, uh, yeah, and then he had a great solo career. Um, didn't get a lot of fame during that solo career, but that's, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. Um, and uh, to get out of the 60s, um, I saw this album at a very, very fair price. And this is uh, with John Fox. This is the first, uh, no, the third record by Ultravox. And this is Sy Systems of Romance. And uh, just so stoked to have this one. So clean, wonderful. I mean, I want, I want to get the very first Ultravox. I don't have that. I have Vienna, but I really wanted to get one with John Fox on it. And again, this record is just immaculate. Here is the vinyl. And it just sounds wonderful. I just uh, played it this morning. Uh, and on his system <clears throat> in the store, uh, just um, incredible sounding. So Ultravox, <clears throat> and my very last record to show, here's a band. This was recorded in uh, Cambridge, Mass. Uh, they are from uh, Rhode Island originally, uh, Newport, Rhode Island. And this record is from 1989. And this is getting more into the alternative indie rock. And this was here. I had to get it because I have everything by uh, Tanya Donnelly and Kirsten Hirsch, and that would be Throwing Muses, Hunk Papa from 1989. And such a creative band. Uh, love this band. He didn't have a whole lot of 80s or 90s records. He had a whole lot of 60s and 70s, um, you know, being a vintage store as it was. But I love this record. I have all of uh, just about everything from Throwing Muses on vinyl. And uh, just great to have this one. They were such a great team, uh, Kirsten and Tanya, when they were together in Throwing Muses. And this is right, this is right in between uh, House Tornado from 1988 and The Real Ramona from 1991. So Hunk Papa is right in the middle in 1989. Uh, so, hey guys, thanks so much. Just wanted to show off my uh, eight records uh, that, I, uh, that I scored, my uh, mini vinyl haul uh, from Originals Vinyl uh, on, uh, on Fillmore Street and Hayes in the Fillmore in San Francisco. All right, I'll see you on the next video. All right, bye. Thanks.